Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the next episode of the Beginner Basic series on the Ranger class. Now, Rangers are experts of tracking their foes and being types of skirmisher combatants. Rangers are all about quickly darting in and out of combat, dealing damage to monsters, heavy amounts of damage, as well as with high proficiency using a bow. So Rangers can kind of be a little bit of a, du they have a little bit of a duality to them, and they get a lot of extra abilities to allow them to make, take on many different roles during combat and in a party. Rangers, for the most part, uh, have a few important stats they need to pay attention to. First of all, Dex is generally the most important stat for a Ranger. You can play Strength-based Rangers and use different types of things, but in general, Dex is going to be your bread and butter. Gives you damage with your bows, gives you damage with light weapons, which you want for dual wielding, and... It gives you defense, as like your reflex saves, your armor class. It's how you stay alive. But speaking of staying alive, constitution. It's really important to have constitution. This gives you your health. So the more constitution you have, the more health you have. So generally, you want to use as much constitution as possible. Have that, pump it up, so you don't die. Wisdom is used for casting ranger spells. You need a 14 wisdom to be able to cast all the ranger spells in the game. And this does not mean a 14, like to start. You just need to have a 14 to cast ranger spells, or at least the highest tier, when you are level 14. So I wouldn't to worry too much about wisdom. You can get this stat with items or with access to a, a, a guild ship if you're in a guild or you have a friend who can just give you access to one. Uh, very easy to get, but you can start with some so you can have a little bit of extra points just to get started. Intelligence is good for your skill points, and rangers have access to a lot of different skills which you may find valuable on the combat field. Charisma is basically useless. You're in the forest and you're not talking to animals, so who cares about this one? And then as I said, strength. You want a little bit of strength just so you can carry some gear, but it's not the most important stat unless you want to play as a strength-based ranger, which I'm not super covering here, but you can take a lot of the concepts here and make a strength-based ranger, and I'll have a guide for you in the description if that's something you want to check out later. So what skills are we talking about here? Well, as a ranger, you get a lot of skill points every time you level up. And so the main ones that I would recommend are use magic device, swim, spot, search, heal, concentration, and balance. Concentration is good because whenever you get hit when you're casting a spell, you might lose your spell, and rangers do have some healing spells. So if you want to heal yourself in combat or a friend, taking damage and losing it is pretty bad. So concentration is pretty nice. Heal improves the power of your healing spells. That just explains itself. Uh, search allows you to find detect or secret doors, which is very nice. You can't really find traps because if the trap is too hard to find, only rogues can find it. It's a special rule in the game. But you can use this to find secret doors, which allows you to get, keep adventuring and maybe find some treasure chests. Additionally, spot is nice because spot allows you to... Uh, it's like the game telling you when something is hidden. So sometimes monsters will be stealthed, but if you are you have spot, you can actually see them. So to other people, they'll literally be invisible. They won't be drawn on the screen, but for you, they'll actually be drawn. You can see an outline of them, and you'll see where the monsters are, even though someone's standing next to you might not, as well as for detecting traps ahead of time. So if there's it might be a trap in front of you, a little ping will come up on your screen saying, hey, there's a trap here, and you're gonna you're gonna die every time. So keep that in mind. Swim just makes you faster. The more swim you have, the faster you swim, and swim is just nice. I like to have it personally. Balance is for whenever you get knocked down, you can get back up. This is very useful if you're standing on grease, if wolves are tripping you. Lots of different monsters have knockdown attacks, so balance is just generally useful. And then finally, use magic device. Use magic device allows you to use all sorts of different magical items, like resurrection scrolls, so you can raise your friends from the dead, or different types of protective magical wands. These are very useful, and something that you'll learn about a little bit later, but I recommend putting points into this just when you level up, even if you don't entirely understand what it's for, as you level up and you'll learn more about the game, you will. Now, when it comes to um, the rest of the skills, the only other ones I would say is if you want to be sneaky, move silently and hide are pretty good if you want to sneak around. So you can swap out something, maybe swap out balance and swim for hide and move silently or something else. Um, hide and move silently. Hide is your ability to not be seen. Move silently is your ability to not be heard. They're different things, so you need both skills if you want to sneak around effectively. Now, let's talk about spells. Rangers do not get many spells. They only get a couple. However, uh, they're mostly defensive and buff spells for the most part. So if you have any of your spells, you get them at level 4, then you get level 2 spells at level 8, level 3 spells at level 11, and level 4 spells by level 14. Most of the ranger spells, again, are just defensive abilities or uh, things that give you a little bit of uh, bonus stats like this Ram's Might here, which increases your size and gives you a plus 2 bonus to strength and damage. This damage, even though I said strength isn't that important, this applies to all of your attacks, so it's pretty nice. So there's a lot of good spells in here. Just read each one and see if they have any value to you. Jump is a standout 
uh, at the early levels. Rams might resist energy to take less damage from elemental attacks. All things that are pretty good. Or Merfolk's Blessing, so you swim fast. All these things are situational. Now, if you want to use a spell to actually get access to it, you put them in a tavern. So now that I'm in a tavern, I have this prepare spells thing, and I can swap out my spells, so I can put in Ram's Might. Additionally, uh, you can also swap out spells when you shrine, so if you rest at a shrine, you can swap them out. Say you realize there's fire elementals in a quest and you didn't have any resist fire, you can find a shrine in the quest and then rest at it and then change out your spell, so keep that in mind. However, some of your spells are going to require spell components, like this Merfolk's Blessing, so I'll let me show you where to find them. I'm going to leave this tavern here. I'm in the tavern in House Marketplace. I can read. And what you want to do is you want to head to any general vendor who will sell you spell components. You can find one in the harbor, but since I'm in the market, I'm going to go to the center of the market here, this market tent, and you'll be able to see that there's some people down here that will sell me some spell components like this Divine Reagent vendor, Brother Baroth Goeth. What a good name. I'm going to talk to Brother Baroth, and I would tell him I like to trade. And when I sort by value, which will show me the spell the spell components in kind of like their order, I can see I have Chameleon Tails here, which is the first level spell component, indicated by this one. And then later on, you'll be able to buy the second level. This guy doesn't have the level yet, but you can buy them in House Jurasco or House Fjarlin if you want to buy higher level spell components. Now, how does attacking work? Because I want to get into some of the ranger feats, but it's important for me to explain how attacks work, because uh, if you don't know, it's going to make the feats really hard to explain. So basically, when you attack stuff, you want to be use a weapon you're proficient with, and when you put it in your hand, you're going to see these numbers down here. I've got a bonus, I have a damage. What does any of that actually mean? So in DDO, to attack, you need to make a connection with a monster. So I'm just going to go into an adventure here, and we're going to, I'm going to show off how attacks work, so you can kind of get a, a chance to see it. Now, the bonus is your hit chance. This is how much hit chance you, or how much of a chance you have to hit the monster, sort of. So... If a monster is in front of me, I need to hit their armor class. So to give you a great, great example, I am a ranger with a 22 armor class right here, and I have a plus 13 on this bonus. This means that if I want to hit me, the game is going to roll a 20-sided die, add 13, and it needs to equal at least 22 or higher. So which means I need to roll a 9, my die roll, to be able to hit me. So that's how attacking works. So the bonus is your chance to hit. The damage is the damage. The d6 represent the actual die that this would be based off of, because it's based off of pen and paper Dungeons and Dragons that you'd play in real life. And then the bonus plus is just added onto that. So this character, you could rewrite this as 9 to 14 damage, but here it's written as a d6 plus 8. Kind of keep that D&D element in here. Now, whenever you make it an actual attack, let me put on some arrows. Um, when I make an attack, I have to actually click and it's going to fire my weapon. So if I come in here to find a monster, there's a trap. You can see it says acute senses. There's a trap nearby. There is. It's right there. Um, there's a spider here. Whenever I want to attack it, I actually have to shoot it. So if I have my arrow here or my bow, I press my button and then boom, I shoot it. I click and you can see this little die roll here. There's the die that goes off. It says 19 plus 13 and I killed the spider by dealing damage. Getting started is pretty straightforward. When you want to shoot monsters with ranged attacks, because I'm a ranger and I have a bow, I can try to aim at the spider, but I might miss. You can use tab, or you can click on the monster, which will hard target it, and then when I fire, my character will automatically start tracking it, and my arrows will go directly to it. However, if you don't want to do that, you can also free fire and snipe out some barrels or other things, and or the monsters themselves. And that's basically how attacking works. However, there's a couple elements here. Number one, archers do require arrows, so you'll need to get yourself, although we'll talk about later, you can uh, kind of get the infinite arrows right here, so you don't have to worry about arrows too much. And if you're a ranger, rangers are dual wielders. So you don't use one weapon. Rangers, you want to use two weapons, allowing you to attack with two weapons at the same time. However, there's an easy way to do this. Instead of having to equip two weapons, you can have these weapon sets. So what I can do is I can take my weapon, put weapon one on here, the one I want in my main hand, put weapon two into my offhand, and then when I have it on my action bar, I can press it and it automatically equips it. So that way I can go from dual wielding right back to bow and arrow, shoot some shots right back to dual wielding if I want to be some type of cool hybrid. Now, how exactly do these numbers work? Because as you notice, I'm plus six with my two weapons and I'm plus 13 with the bow. That seems kind of crazy. So the way that this actually figures out is it'll tell you on the weapon attack mod, which is that bonus, and a damage mod. It'll tell you where these numbers come from. So it's dexterity for attack and damage with my bow, which is convenient. I said dexterity is the most important thing with a ranger. Uh, dexterity is how you actually hit monsters with bows. However, when dual wielding, weapons, unfortunately, melee weapons, use strength alone. So obviously that's not quite as good. There are some workarounds, though. 
as rangers, if you want to do a wield in the Tempest tree, get access to this ability here, Whirling Steel, and then Tempest, which lets you use your dexterity to hit monsters, and then Graceful Death, which, let, which lets you use your dexterity to damage. The benefit of both of these is it means that you can be an all-dexterity character with never having to worry about strength, using your dexterity both for your bow attacks and for your melee attacks, and you can be two weapon fighting at the same time. Now, the reason why I wanted to explain all that before we got into the feats is because rangers get a bunch of free feats. I'm going to put a link to the actual ranger um, like chart so you can see what feats they get. But basically, rangers get all the two-weapon fighting feats for free, so you don't have to take any of them, and you automatically get all the proficiencies and benefits of two-weapon fighting. And rangers also get pretty much every single ranged feat. Rangers pick up rapid shot, precise shot, improved precise shot, and many shot, all for free during the leveling process. Meaning, if you're playing as a bow character, all you need to take is the uh, point-blank shot feat to give you some extra damage, which is really good for bows, and the improved critical feat to get you extra bow damage, improved critical range, so you uh, critically hit more often. And if you're a melee ranger, all you need to take is improved critical for whatever weapon type you want to use. So if you're using slashing weapons, improved critical slashing. If you're going to use bludgeoning weapons, improve critical bludgeoning. In general, I would recommend slashing weapons, and if you wanted to use a melee, I would go with uh, scimitars as your main weapon, and if you're a ranged character, obviously bows are kind of your bread and butter. Scimitars are very, very good for rangers, because while they're not generally light weapons, uh, Tempest has a special rule which says scimitars are light weapons, making them the best light weapon you can possibly equip on this type of character. So, now let's actually get into the feats. Which feats do you want to take? Well, as I said, you get all the two weapon fighting feats and the range, most of the range feats. So what do you actually take now? Well, a couple of things. One, you can focus more on defensive feats. So this character, I've got dodge and mobility. I picked it up just to get some extra defenses. It gives you more dodge bonus, which is a percent chance to just get missed. So 3% and 2%, 5% chance monsters just miss me automatically. That's convenient when you run through dungeons and there's lots of monsters, taking less damage is always gonna be good. Additionally, because you have so many free feats, you can also take a Dragon Mark if you like. If you're playing as a Halfling, you can take the Halfling Dragon Mark, which allows you to cast heals on yourself. If you're a, uh, you know, a, an Elf, which I am, this character, I could take the Dragon Mark of Shadow, which allows me to cast illusory spells like Invisibility, or to make myself look like I'm two different people by casting the Displacement spell. Very cool options as well. So what this means is, your character is pretty much extremely flexible when it comes to feats, and you can kind of do whatever you want. Uh, since you get most of them, or most of the ones you need, as I said, I would recommend if you're playing as a bow character, point blank shot. If you're playing as a bow character, um, improve critical range. If you're playing as a melee character, improve critical slashing, generally. And finally, the last feat is precision. Precision allows you to um, just hit a little bit better. It's a stance you put on, and then allows you to hit more, so I would recommend those. Outside of that, super flexible. It doesn't really matter which ones you take. However, one of the ones you have to take, ranger specific, is favored enemy. What favored enemy does is it gives you plus two to damage against that enemy type. Now, you might not know what types are in DDO, but don't worry, I'm here to tell you. Favored enemies, uh, you know, there's so many different enemy types in the game. If I show unavailable and I scroll down here, where's favored enemy? Oh, it doesn't actually show them, but there's a huge list. There's like undead, reptiles, humanoids, dwar or humans, dwarves, elves, uh, halflings, um, was it monstrous humanoids, demons, devils, all sorts of stuff. It's actually evil outsiders, lawful outsiders, chaotic outsiders, good outsiders, plants, undead, or constructs, aberrations. And you might not know what all those things actually mean. Don't worry. I'll have an explanation for you and which ones you should take. However, uh, what you should know is that you get extra damage against your favorite enemy and you get more damage for each one you have. So I have favorite enemy undead, so I get two extra damage against undead. When I get level five ranger, I get a new one. And I would pick, let's just say, construct. When I have Construct, now I deal an extra two damage to Constructs and Undead, because it says for each favorite enemy feat that you have. Which means that this is now doing four extra damage to my enemies for each favorite enemy feat that I have. And it keeps applying and keeps stacking up. So I'll have a list of the ones, as I said, below, so you can follow along with that. But favorite enemies are a great way to get additional damage. Also, out of your enhancement trees, Rangers can also specialize in favorite enemies, which we'll talk about in a little bit. No, we're going to talk about it now. So, uh, Rangers, they get three different enhancement trees. They're kind of split up in a good way because it makes a lot of sense. Arc and Archer is exactly as it sounds. Do you want to play as a bow character? Arc and Archer is for you. It's got everything you need. Infinite arrows from the Conjure Arrows ability. You can change your arrows to either be 
bludgeoning, slashing, and piercing for hitting like skeletons and zombies at the same time that might resist a certain damage type or make them metal so they can bypass all metal damage reductions for destroying constructs or make them aligned for dealing with special celestials and outsiders or make them shadows so they just do a hell of damage. All these things are very, very good. However, you get to imbue even more by adding elemental damage to your arrows. You can make them acidic, fiery, cold, or shocking, so when you hit monsters, they take tons of extra damage, scaling off of your spell stats. If you want to have more information about the Arcane Archer and what to do, I'll link my most popular guide, Shrimp Tom's Arcane Archer, below. You can follow that one if you want to be an Arcane Archer. Then we have the Tempest Ranger, which is all about dual wielding, literally creating a whirlwind with two weapons. It's all about two weapon fighting, and if you want to be a two weapon fighter, this is where you go. Tempest gives you access to uh, extra offhand strike chance while dual wielding, using your dexterity to hit damage, 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 attack speed. You've got uh, ability to dodge traps, dodging monsters, more defenses while you're actually dual wielding. A storm stance where you deal lightning damage when you hit monsters and you absorb lightning damage. Cool stuff. And their big, big capstone ability called Dance of Death allows you to hit multiple targets at the same time that are in front of you. So instead of hitting one person with your weapon, you actually just start doing like a whirlwind, hitting literally every single monster in front of you, making it feel really, really, really strong. And then there's the middle one, Deepwood Stalker. Deepwood Stalker is not a bow tree, and it's not a two-weapon fighting tree. This tree is a supportive tree for the most part. It is a little bit more oriented towards range than melee, but the general thought here is it's kind of like, if you're playing as an arcane archer, you probably don't want tempest stuff, because you're not dual wielding. If you're playing as a tempest, you probably aren't using the bow stuff from arcane archer, because you generally DDO likes you to specialize. So Deepwood Stalker is where you kind of put the rest of your points. Deepwood Stalker has a lot of amazing things. Bonuses against favorite enemies, so like now you have more defense against favorite enemies in here. Or bonuses like favorite hunters. You do even more damage to your favorite enemies. So a lot of favorite enemy specific things. You also get sneak attack damage here as well. Positive spell power for all your healing abilities if you want to cast heal spells. Some cool attacks depending on what it is you want to do. Like called shot, or which is sniper shot or exposing strike. Which is an extremely high power, high damage attack. Both for ranged and melee. And every ranger should always take this. Because it does a bunch of damage. And it bluffs the target, which makes it so that the target actually thinks you're not its you're not attacking it and allows you to sneak attack them even though they're standing right in front of your face. There's no check either, it just automatically works. Deepwood Stalker, very, very good supportive tree. It is not something you want to be focusing on primarily as your main tree. Arcane Archer if you're a Ranger and Tempest if you're not. But there are some builds that definitely make use of the Deepwood Stalker and take pretty much everything in here. Uh, but for the basics, I am dual wielding Tempest. I am archering Arcane Archer. And if you're doing neither, you're, or if you're doing either, you're putting points into Deepwood Stalker. I don't super recommend hybriding, which is like using both dual wheeling and ranged on one character. But if you like to play normal and hard, uh, you can do that pretty much the entire way through the game and have a reasonably good time. The only exception I would say to this is that if you are playing as a Tempest Ranger, one of the abilities you get later on is called Many Shot. And it's a special buff. It's like a little, it's a, it's a spell that you can cast with your bow and allows you to fire three arrows in a row. You just go like, boom, 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 and hit somebody really hard. Uh, that has a 30 second second cooldown because that's as these charges you can cast on it. So what you can do if you want, if you're a Tempest Ranger, is have a bow. And then when you put the many shot on your toolbar, sort of like this ability here, you can then press it and do extra damage, which is just kind of nice uh, when you're going into combat and then maybe swap to your dual wielding once you get in there and start slashing at people. And then just let the bow sit on the back while you're waiting for that cooldown to come back. It's generally how I look at the enhancements here. Now let's take a look at items. What kind of items and stats do you want on rangers? Well, weapons. How do they work? As I said here, you've got the attack and the damage mod, but then you've also got the weapon stats. How do you actually know what's important? Like, what do these weapons even mean? So number one, the plus. This is just plus to hit and damage. So it says a bonus, and that's plus one to hit and damage with this weapon. So the higher the plus, the more damage you're doing and the more chance you have to hit. However, you also have extra effects like flaming and spell and what have you. Here's the quick and dirty on what you need to know. If it looks like it does extra damage, it probably does. So it says a flaming weapon deals extra damage on hit, Perfect. I love extra damage on hit. That sounds great. If it says the word spell, spell power, spell critical, spell something, that's not going to affect your attacks. So you're not a spell caster. You're a stab caster. You stab people and then they die. So you don't want to be using worrying about spell stats pretty much. 
You want to be pick, picking up weapons that are going to be doing damage to your enemies. Now, rangers can cast healing spells, so you do want to get some spell power, specifically called devotion, which is good for positive spell power. However, you don't want that on your weapons. Your weapons are for killing people. Uh, you should get maybe a ring of devotion, a gloves of devotion, helmet of devotion, belt of devotion, necklace of devotion, something else of devotion. Moving on past that, so that's your hit chance. You want to make sure you have extra damage stuff, anything that gives you damage. But what kind of defensive abilities do you need? What do you want on your armor? Well, as I said before, dex is your main stat. Get some dex. Constitution. Get some constitution. That sounds pretty good. Get some more health. Anything that literally says health, that's going to be really good. It's going to keep you alive and keep you protected. Um, if you don't have a lot of spell points and you want to have some more, you can get some wisdom items or things that say spell points on them specifically. When it comes to defense, anything that gives you more armor class is usually pretty nice. Additionally, anything that says sheltering or physical or magical resistance rating contributes to these stats right here. And physical resistance rating and magical resistance rating are the biggest ways for you to reduce incoming damage. So if you find like bracers that give you physical resistance rating or maybe a ring that gives you magical resistance rating, very, very good. And those are the types of things you want to equip. Additionally, if you can find stuff that gives bonuses to your saving throws, that's always nice. Um, so for example, this rugged belt says plus five to maximum health. Great item. I love this. I like not dying. Fortitude saves. Makes it so my fortitude saves are higher, so I resist spell effects. Great effect. I love it. Perfect. Um, you know, protection plus one armor class. Again, you can't go wrong as long as you have things that are defensive and that are helping you out. These are the kind of stats that you want to look for and try to avoid things that are spellcaster oriented unless it's specifically devotion. That's pretty much the only one that you care about. Now, as a final note, a couple of pro tips here uh, to look at when it comes to Ranger. As I said, you have a lot of flexibility when it comes to your feats. However, Rangers are not healers. They have some healing spells, but you don't even get your first one until level 8. And this is going to sound crazy. You're going to be playing the game a lot before you get to level 8. So you want to be able to heal yourself, and that's where hirelings come in. Hirelings are contracts you can buy in town. There's hireling vendors in the marketplace. There's hireling vendors in the harbor. Uh, the marketplace, they're literally right down here. And uh, that's the door, so it's pretty pretty close to the center. And what hirelings do is when you summon them in quests, uh, they will cast healing spells on you. So you just summon them, and then they'll follow around with you, and they'll cast healing spells on you. Uh, they're great if you buy a cleric hireling or a favored soul hireling. Uh, don't buy... You can buy, like, other ones if you want, like a paladin or a fighter, but they're not going to heal you. They're just going to hit monsters, which is sometimes good, but the clerics are good. They also cast offensive spells, and they also punch things, they like hit things with their maces and what have you, which are pretty good. So keep that in mind, uh, a, a hireling is uh, not essential, but it'll definitely make your leveling process a lot easier and something I definitely, definitely recommend. I think it's pretty much everything that I have to say about the Ranger class. It's fun and it's personally one of my favorite classes in the entire game. I love Ranger. Tempest Ranger is just one of my favorite builds. Uh, I've played Tempest Ranger to death. I played it uh, for just literally years when the first hardcore season released which is where you only get one life and if you die that's it make a new character i played ranger for the first season and it just destroyed all the content and we got all the rewards and it was really fun uh it's easily one of my favorite classes i love this thing and i think you will too although i'm much a bigger fan of the melee version than the ranged version which is ironic because my Claim to fame, my biggest, most popular thing I've ever done is Strim Tom's Acid Arrow, a bow build, and I don't like playing bow characters anymore. Oh, that's just how it is. I just don't like the playstyle. I prefer melee. Me I fell in love with melee when I started playing Tempest and I never went back. Although you may still enjoy Arcane Archer. With that being said, that's all I have. So if you like this, if this helped you out, make sure you hit that like button. Subscribe to the channel to make sure you get more content delivered to you, more beginner basics. And additionally, share with a friend if you know somebody who wants to get started and they don't know how to play Ranger. Uh, share this with them so they can see that. But with that being said, that's all I have. Thank you for watching. Enjoy the rest of your entire day. And I am going to disappear into a fog cloud. No, I'm not. I don't have a fog cloud. I don't want to edit that in. Maybe, I, maybe I'm going to edit in a fog cloud. You don't know. <laughs>